I'm Jordan Williamson and I would love to be your drum teacher. So how old were you when you first started playing drums? Were you like a baby? Like so a, like when so just yeah, walking as soon as you could walk, you were like drumsticks in hand. So it's like usually I feel like it's I don't know like a stereotype maybe like I would get the pots and pans out and stuff, but I'd say really I started taking it pretty serious when I was about ten years old, um, and I took lessons for about six years, um, and so when I was ten, I got my first like electric kit. And I would kind of dabble around with that. And I was playing sports at the time, so it's like, you know, it wasn't really my main focus at that point yet, but I knew that I had something there. And then by the time um, I was in seventh grade, middle school, I got an acoustic kit, and I've, ha I've actually had the same one. What is the best piece of advice another musician has given you? I'd say the best piece of advice, and I feel like I've had a lot of different advice from people, um, is... Um, and it was from my drum teacher, um, and his name is Paul Turner, um, and he's great. Um, I'd say really the piece of advice that he's given me, and I mean honestly I would say it's a pretty obvious one, is just continue to practice and practice and practice, because honestly as a teacher and him as a teacher, I mean, and teachers in general, they could teach you until you know, you're blue in the face, but if you don't give it the time at home practicing, then really you won't really see any um, improvement and development and so to me I'm really big on practicing I encourage my students to practice as much as they can to see that flourishment in their playing and uh, certain things that they're working on so I'd say the best advice is to just I mean practice and practice and listen to different genres of music listen to uh, like drum heavy records and stuff and kind of dissect what that drummer's doing and try to Try to transcribe what they're playing in your head and try to put it on the kit as well and kind of make it your own, you know? You know, we're very lucky and blessed here because most of our students that come through the door, you know, they're gung-ho about learning. You know, yeah. you don't really have to have that practice conversation with the majority of them. And, um, you know, they're here because they want to be here. And, yeah. um, you know, that's, you know, maybe you could talk a little bit about that, about like what you look for in, in a student because I know you know, for me, it was just always, you know, that student who wants to be here. They genuinely, oh, right, right, right. you don't have to say, all right, yeah. time to practice, <laughs> you know, I'm going to say, yeah. I'm going to write this out for you, and yeah. then I hope that they come back next week and right, have right. it. You know, I, I, I was lucky enough in my time teaching here to have students that, you know, I just never had to have that conversation. Yeah. They just wanted to be here. They, yeah. they wanted it so bad. And um, do you have some students on your schedule that are like that? And I would say I have a lot of students that are really eager to learn and are very passionate. Um, and I understand, too, if they can't practice all the time, because I always tell them, like, look, I'm more than happy to help you out with whatever it is that you may need help with whenever you come back in. Um, but I would say I definitely say what I look for in a student is just someone who's got that fiery passion with inside them for the principal instrument and whatever instrument that may be. Um, but obviously in particular it would be the drums. I would say someone who's eager uh, to listen and to learn um, and someone who's also eager to you know sit at home for I mean not even 30 minutes like an hour two hours practicing and practicing what I give them and then experimenting on their own with just playing just about anything or even listening and stuff like that. Being versatile is so important especially yeah. with you know, young kids learning you know, oh, we sure. get some rock school kids that are like, you know, I never want to play the country tune. <laughs> and yeah. I think that you got to understand as you kind of grow as a musician and, yeah. and really you kind of grow as a person. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of jobs out there in the music field that involve performing that don't necessarily mean that you have to be a rock star. Right, right, right. right. You know, you're talking about studio musicians. Yeah. Maybe you're in three or four bands kind of like you are. Sure. Um, you know, and I think a lot of people have to realize that, like, you should definitely take that country gig yeah. while you're waiting on the metal gig to come along that you really want. You and know? I think, I think too, it's like you got to be adaptable in the music field and industry because it's like you could have one gig that's a completely different genre and then you could have, like you were saying, if you were wanting to do that metal thing, that's where the versatility comes in right. and the adaptability to be able to do those things. I think it's, as a musician, it's yeah. really important that, you know, we don't pigeonhole ourselves into one area, yeah. um, you know, because yeah. it's, it's just, it's one of those deals where, you know, there's so much 
I feel like there's so much more opportunity out there. Oh yeah. If you can be versatile, yeah, then for sure. You know, I'm just the metal guy, or I'm just the country <laughs> guy, or I'm I'm just the jazz guy, or whatever. Yeah.